What's up guys and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be covering the Displace Elements tool. This one right there. So what does this do? This tool is kind of specific and honestly I don't use it enough. Like I should, I should use this a lot more for presentation and specific documentation views. So what this tool does is it allows me to like kind of explode, like pseudo explode the Revit model and get a different perspective on the different elements and how they go together and where. And so maybe let's let's get our view set up a bit for that because it, it is view specific. So what I've got here is just a basic 3D view with different floor plan. And so maybe I want to look at a kind of exploded view or displaced view of this these two bathroom and locker room areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and create, I'm gonna kind of duplicate this view with detailing. So I can keep all of my detailing. Now what I'll do is I'll select all of these elements and I will isolate them in view. So I'll go to the sunglasses down here. I will isolate this element or all of these elements. You can see my, my screen turns blue and I've got temporary height isolate up here. And now I've got all these elements exactly how I want them. So now, maybe I have a view that is, uh, maybe I need to document this, this locker room. And yeah, I've gone through different floor plans and sections and all of that, but maybe what I need to do is just show an overall 3D view of everything together and how it comes together. So that's where the displacement tool comes into play. So I still, it's still grayed out. I can't change the view, but what I'm gonna have to do is spe select specific elements and displace those. So maybe I first want to start by displacing the walls. So what I can do is I'll select all of these walls on the perimeter. Actually, let's go by let's go by side. So maybe I'll just I'll start with this one element. I'll click that one wall and you can see now that I've selected an element, I have the option to use the displacement tool. So I'll hit displace elements and now I'm prompted to move this wall or move the selection. And it's it's kind of weird you may have seen a, a different kind of XYZ coordinate in families or whatever it might be but or masses if you work with masses this is the same XYZ push pool that you can use and what I want to do now is start to pull this element away and displace it <laughs> imagine that so I can use this control there to pull that away and so what I'm left with is this wall pulled away from the rest of the wall. So you, you, your first thought is, whoa, whoa, you're moving the wall. You're moving this element. And yes, I am, but I'm not physically moving it. So one way to test that is I can go back to my first working view and see that everything is still intact. This wall is not moved at all. It's exactly how I want it in the project. But if I go back to this other working view, clearly it's still selected. That's the same wall, but it's displaced. It's weird. Well, that's because I've used the displace tool. And in this case, it's perfect. So I could do the same thing with this wall. And I will. I'll click the displacement tool and I can pull this away. Now, I can also do the same thing with different elements or more than one element. So I'll select all of these walls. This wall, this wall, this wall, and these. So I've selected all of these walls and now I'll hit the displacement tool and this entire tool works with every selection. So in this case, I've selected more than one wall. And something else to note, because these doors are hosted to the walls I selected, they're going to go with it as well. You wouldn't want the doors just hanging out behind. So that's great, that's perfect, that's what I want. So now I'll pull this away. And so now we can start to get a better idea of how these different parts and pieces work together and how they come together. So this isn't quite helpful. It's beginning to look a little more helpful. So what I can do is whenever I select any of these elements, now I have a few extra tools in the displacement set here. So edit. I can edit what I've selected as a part of this displacement. And whenever I do that, I have the option to add or subtract different elements into this selection. So if you watch, I'll add this shower and it is displaced the same way as the wall 
and I can do this with as many elements as I want. Remember, I moved that wall over, and so because I had all these showers against the wall before, they are like they are in the project. So I've hit OK. The, I've got the showers there. They're a part of this complete displacement set. And the, I, perhaps the greatest part of using the displacement tool, besides actually displacing, is that if I select a displacement, I can choose this path. And as I, you can see, I have this path. I've got this the mouse with a bunch of weird looking dots that are actually a path. So what this path is doing is it's going to help orient us to where the displacement took place. So in this case, if I hover over the edge of these walls, I can start to click and see and add different paths to where this wall came from. And they are 3D elements and they work in 3D so you can start to see where that wall was. So the, the edge of the path touching the wall, because I moved the wall, is where it is now. And the other end of the path is where the wall was. So you can see that movement. And this works with every displacement that I've made. And so what I might do is add these different paths to certain points along the displacement to give a better idea to where the displacement came from and how everything comes together. You can see it working just like this. I can select the edge of this wall as well. And you can see they actually come together because they are supposed to come together. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now, again, I may not use the displacement tool for something like this. I'd probably use it more for like a specific assembly or maybe a, if I have a, a curtain wall meeting a different type of wall and where it comes together and how, maybe there's something along with that. But for tutorial purposes, I'm showing all of this. So what I'll do is I'll select all of these lockers now. I don't necessarily want these here in the center. So I'll deselect those select that one and I'll make this a new displacement and so I'll pull these away and I, again I can add the path to all of these and you're gonna get a path option for almost every edge <laughs> or every projection line of this model element in this case it has a lot of different elements because it's this weird locker family so right now it's starting to look pretty good. I can get an idea as I spin around where all these elements go and if they were to be not displaced, where they would end up again. And again, they'll always go back to where they came from. And remember that this is a view specific thing because if I were to go back to any other view, everything is completely intact as it was just a standard 3D view with different options in it. You can see right here, all of these elements are exactly where I left them. All of the elements are the same. So again, I don't use this tool quite a lot. I should probably use it more for presentation purposes, but I guess what I might do is for something like this, I don't want like some weird angle here. I, I probably want to force an angle on the view cube. So I, I'll click that top angle to kind of force this into an axonometric view. And what I can do down here is I can go down to this home button with lock. And you can see as I hover over it, it says unlock 3D view. Now maybe if I want to save this view as something specific and, I, and put it on a, a document, for example, if I want to show how all these elements come together, I could save orientation and lock view. And what this is going to do is not allow me to use the view cube anymore. So I can pan around all day, but I'm trying to orbit and use the orbit tool and I can't say this command is disabled while the view is locked and that's perfect so maybe I want to lock and keep this view while I have all of these elements displaced so I can see this on my documents so that works out pretty well and I guess while we're here I've got the view locked again and this is kind of nice because what I can do actually and, and this only works because I have the view locked is I can actually tag these walls or tag different elements. So I'll go to just tag category and you can see that these different types of wall tags show up and now I'll go to maybe a multi-category so we can see how all these different elements would be tagged and so I can start to tag all of these different elements in 3D if I wanted to just like that. And that works perfectly to create a, 
view that I might put on a document. You know, I you could present this as a, a form of a presentation, or maybe it's in a slideshow or something, and you could still call out all the different elements that are in here, but I could see how this might be helpful in a, a document set. So I sure hope you learned something. If you did demolish that like button, please do that. Also subscribe if you enjoyed this video. There will be a lot more coming out soon. Always coming out with new Revit tutorials and other kinds of videos. So if you enjoy this video, please like again. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one.